So the first thing I want to ask you is, when did you first develop an interest in horror movies? Um, like as early back as I can remember. Um, when I was a little kid, anything that was scary, anything that had involved witches or mummies or you know Frankenstein, all that kind of stuff, uh, when I was like three and four years old. So I was always really fascinated by it. I remember, um, I can't remember which movies exactly, but I remember being introduced to Vincent Price really early. Um, when I was still living in England, it was Vincent Price and Peter Cushing always it made an impression on me. Um, Lon Chaney, all that stuff. And it was, it was hard to, to see these movies because when it came to TV, there was only a couple of stations that were even on at any given time during the day. And so when these, it was an event when there was a scary movie on, but I was really attracted to it. And that coupled with my dad turned me on to uh, Orson Welles, Cassettes of uh, War of the Worlds, okay. and you know which he they broadcast, the radio yeah. broadcast. and he had a, a really cool little box with all the cassettes in them, and he gave me that and turned me on to that, and a lot of horror literature, you know, like Edgar Allan Poe and H. P. Lovecraft and uh, Bradbury. And you were a visual of, artist too. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's something about uh, you know. I always used to draw all this stuff, and so. That was the beginnings of it. And then when I moved to uh, the States, it just blossomed from there. And my mom was a big horror nut as well. So between the two of them, they turned me on to everything. So but tell me, how did Slasher Films come about? Well, Slasher Films, um, just very by surprise. I had a conversation when I probably, a, I'd say a rare conversation with somebody about horror. I can't remember another time that I've had a, an in-depth conversation about horror with anybody. But uh, he's a, a, a film and TV producer. And by the end of this conversation, he's like, you would make a great producer, you know, for horror movies. And I was like, yeah, 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 you know. And then he called me a couple days later and says, I'm going to send you some scripts and tell me what you think of them. So he sent me the scripts and I absorbed these scripts. I got really into uh, dissecting them and all that. And then we got together and we had a meeting, you know, basically a casual meeting over these scripts. And I picked out the ones that I liked and, and nothing left to fear being one of them. And, and he, you know, he was very casual. I said, well, let's, let's produce a movie, you know. We'll, uh, came up with the idea for slasher, slasher films. And uh, we, we ended up picking uh, Nothing Left to Fear because we really loved the story and it was also the one that was the most feasible to do with the, the, the least budget, <laughs> you know, the small bu smallest budget. And uh, we announced Slasher Films and then started looking for uh, d uh, a director and also distributors and that whole thing. The ironic thing about it was because of the name Slasher Films, it, a lot of people were instantly interested. And, uh, you know, as far as like the, the, the business is concerned. Um, and then we started having meetings with, with directors, picked Anthony Leonardi and then started casting and really just the whole thing from the ground up. What was it about Anthony Leonardi that stood out for you from the pack? Yeah, that's a, he was the guy that showed up and there was a lot of them. And some I knew and some I wasn't familiar with. And he was the one that showed up with the script that was completely rolled up like a you know, beat up newspaper with the coffee stains and the notes and the sketches. And he he'd basically visualized from end to end this entire story and knew all of the, the you know, the, the whole movie back to front basically. And he was very, you know, there was a certain hunger. It's his first feature and he was just really committed already. And he'd, he'd also given us a short that was phenomenal. This little, I think, uh, 10 minute little reel that was just really creepy. And so we picked Anthony and went from there. He's a concept artist for Gore Verbinski. Yeah, yeah. He, he, uh, he's basically Gore's protege, I think is the best way to put it. But uh, he's been around, he's been, his dad's in the, in the film business and still working on films to this day. And so he has been Presumably on the, Anthony Leonardi II. Right, right. <laughs> Very good. Um, and and uh, he's been on, on movie sets his whole life, you know, so there's something to be said about his 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 uh, sort of like ideas of what movies and how movies very set in stone. 
We have to talk about that T-shirt for yeah, a right. second. Phantom of the Paradise. I yeah. was just actually recently listening to some of the songs from that. Yeah, Paul a, Williams, fantastic. Yeah, it's great. And this was a birthday present I just got like a couple of weeks ago from my bass player. So other than the budget, what was it about Nothing Left to Fear that really enticed you? That, in, that enticed me? Mm -hmm. um, there was nothing about the budget that enticed me. <laughs> it was, it was, the story is very simple and you have this, this young, fairly innocent family that gets lured into this town, very innocent pretenses, you know. And, you know, that whole thing about, you know, having them come to take over the congregation, which just seems very pleasant and, uh, and there's such deception there, you know. And then uh, having one of them chosen to be the vessel for this demon, I just thought was just, you know, it just, I, I was captivated with the story. And then having uh, the demon, you know, having a monster, because that's one of the key things that I want to be able to do when I'm making horror movies, is have a, 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 a villain or protagonist or whatever that's something really recognizable and not necessarily human, you know. Um, and so that was exciting to me. And, and, you know, then there was the whole sort of like the, the daughter being the one as opposed to the son, you know, just having sort of the youngest daughter be the villain in the movie and her taking out her whole family. I just thought, you know, this is a really What's good What's the spoilers? Story. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I forget when this is coming out and then when this is airing. So anyway, yeah, well, you asked. So the town of Stull, Kansas, where the film set is a real town, yeah. and it actually does have a lot of dark folklore to it. So tell yeah. me about the town. Well, I've never been there. And I, initially we wanted to shoot there, but they wouldn't have it. Um, they were not too keen on the idea of further sensationalizing their sort of their community for the sake of entertainment. But what I mean, what I know of it is that it is purported to be the seventh gateway to hell. They have a, a cemetery there that is, I've seen pictures of it, it's pretty creepy. They've had to fence it off to keep people from hanging out there. Um, you know, one of the things that really intrigued me, two of the things that intrigued me about it was the Pope won't fly over it and the band, the Cure won't play near it. All right, they wouldn't play in the adjacent town and I thought that was just hilarious. So I don't, I'm not really sure, I haven't been able to find the, the origins of the story, where this all began. But, uh, you know, you can scroll for days on, on just all this sort of folklore surrounding this, this, this little place. Has anyone from the town seen the film? I No, no. And I haven't met anybody from there either, which I'm waiting for that. So to there's been up. no reaction? Well, no, they, they only, there was a reaction uh, in general when we said we were making a movie they thought was based... Uh, maybe they thought it was about Stull, but they had a very negative reaction, which is why we didn't shoot there. Right. I just imagine if I was a teenager living in Stull and somebody told me that Slash was producing a horror movie based on my town, I'd be pretty chuffed about that. Yeah, but teenagers don't have any say. <laughs> you know, it's probably no, especially in a town that size. They probably eat size. teenagers yeah. in Stull. Right. So along with composer Nicholas O'Toole, you contributed to the film's soundtrack right. and the score. It's not the first time that you've uh, done music for a movie, but how did the collaboration work with... Nicholas O'Toole exactly? Um, well, Nicholas was somebody, I think he, I'm, I'm sure that he did the music for uh, Anthony's short. And so they have a relationship that goes back a while. So I started giving compositions to Anthony, sort of, sort of the ideas of where I was going to go with it musically. And he introduced uh, uh, me to, to, to Nick because we wanted to do uh, an orchestral kind of a thing. And Nick and I hit it off right away and so I started giving him the music that I was writing and he started uh, doing orchestral interpretations of it and then adding his own things and and you know and I, I really got to say we both worked hard on it but he really did most of the work because he did uh, everything as far as what you hear on the, the actual recording I and mean, we used some of my guitar bits and pieces but most of it had to be transposed into computer generated okay. sounds. And so stuff. would you compose bits on the guitar, record it, record send it, it to him, he orchestrated it? And exactly. So you only showed up once or twice to do some guitar work? Um, yeah, well, I mean, I don't want to make it seem like I was that lax. But I mean, I was, I was over at his place with him a lot, but mm -hmm. how much guitar work I actually had to do was like uh, outside of the song, that was the theme song, 
it was uh, probably all of about five minutes worth of, of music that he had to cut up and okay. were you listening to any specific horror soundtracks as inspiration or how did you sort of brainstorm I, the music for I just piece? I just got into the script and so you start to visualize the story um, I started writing music for it way before they started shooting um, and so you just get into your own head and start visualizing the scenes and and just seeing where that mood takes you, you know, musically. It's a it's a it's a great escape for me um, musically because it's it's not uh, there's no real parameters, you know. It's like when I write in terms of a rock band, I'm writing in terms of a song-oriented kind of a thing. When you start uh, doing a score, you can it's it's more just open-ended composition that sort of goes with the flow of the the the, the feel of the of the scene, you know. So it's an interesting it's it's, it's a departure for me. I write completely different for a movie than I do when I'm writing for said band or whatever. What were some of the instruments used in the piece? Oh, in the kind. orchestra? Because there were yeah. like glass, were there any like glass yeah. balls? That was, that's all sort of Nick's arsenal of, right. yeah. I, I, was, I was pretty blown away at, at the amount of stuff he had at his fingertips. Access to all kinds of really The music's great, sound. it's really melancholic and yeah. very, very moody. Uh, some of the, like, uh, like I'll, I can go as far as saying that some of the kill scenes are very melancholy. Instead of them being like these screaming kill scenes, they're more subdued and, and somber and almost sad, you know. But I, I'm really proud of the score because it, uh, it, it, it's like the movie has a vibe and, and, and the score completely supports it, so they work really well together, yeah. What are some of your personal favorite horror movie scores? Well, um, Jaws is definitely one of my favorite ones. I just thought that was uh, pretty brilliant. And I, you know, I, it's not a horror movie, but one of my favorite scores, and it's a Stanley Kubrick movie, which I love, is, is uh, Clockwork Orange. And it's it's scary, but it's not a horror story. You know? um, uh, Halloween, of course, was fucking great. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, the Omen was great. 